Hey everyone, in this episode I'm going to introduce you to our database uh, model structure and we're just going to have a little presentational just to have something to look at, something uh, to imagine how our database structure will look. So at the moment we're just at the product uh, stage. We just have a product and not really a full product either, but generally this is how we want our shop structured to look like. So we have a stock and the stock represents how many types of products we have. So if we go by clothes, we have a t-shirt that's large, medium, or small. And the stock will record how, how many of each item we have. The product model, self-explanatory, it just describes the product. The order object will contain all the necessary information about the order that the user places. And the order product object will connect the product that the user will order to the order object. So there is going to be a many-to-many -many relationship there, and product and stock is going to have a one-to-many relationship. I'm going to show you how to configure these all in any framework. So first of all, let's go into our project domain and set up the models. So let's create stock.cs, give it ID. Let's give it a description. Let's give it a quantity. And at the bottom, let's give it another prop. And let's call it product ID. And another prop, which will be product product okay now if we open our product go into here and create an i collection of stock now the reason to have i collection instead of a list we really only want to expose this add and remove of the enumerable functionality. So we don't really need to utilize the list, so we'll be taking up less memory by doing this. Although C sharp is very forgiving, so it's not that big, big of a deal, but it's good to be specific. Next thing is next. Let's create an order. Again, let's give it an ID. Give it a string of order reference. Let's give it a string of address one. Let's copy this in address two. Uh, do city and do passcode. Okay, so one thing is we'll probably want to move this into a separate model. But if you remember, we are, we're using single responsibility. So the view model for order products will be contained in our application. So now let's create a link between our product and our order. Order product.cs. So the way you configure an, a many-to-many -many relationship is, let's just say that order has an I collection. Prop I collection of order product order product. Let's copy this and let's go into our product and let's put the same thing here. Okay. And now what we want to do, let's copy what our stock has here, product ID and product. Put it in here. And let's do it again. Paste it in a second time. And instead of product, we want to type in order. Order and replace this product with order. Okay, now let's go into our database and our application DB context. And let's add these models to our database.
Okay, now let's open our terminal and let's do .NET EF migrations add shop model. Okay, so as I explained in the previous in the beginning videos, I forgot myself, but yeah, to to run migrations, we have to specify the startup project. So at this point, we have configured a many to many relationship, but order product doesn't have a primary key. So the way we configure a key for our order product is we have to go into our application DB context and we have to override method in order to specify our implementation of this. So public override on model creating. All right, so if you override, you need uh, actually protected. Sorry, and it's void as well. So the on model creating function accepts model builder as a parameter. And what model builder does, it allows us to configure our objects. So for example, we would take model builder, we'll take entity, and let's take our order product entity, which was said to not have a key. And now let's say has key. And this is how we would configure a key. So we want a composite key. So a composite key is a primary key that consists of two primary keys. So in our, in our case, our composite key would contain of these two IDs, which would correspond to these unique IDs, oh, sorry, and product unique ID and order unique ID. So let's go ahead and say that x dot product ID and x dot order ID. So all we're doing here is creating a new object. And if you hover over, you can see that it's anonymous type, but its value consists of these two primary keys. <clears throat> so let's go ahead into our prompt and let's try to run our migrations again. As you can see here, we get a new error and it has to do something with identity user, right? And primary key. So as we configured our primary key here for our object, we had to override an original method for identity DB context. Now remember that identity DB context includes all the configuration for the identity database of storing users, claims, etc. Now when we override that method, <clears throat> we need to call the original method that's run in this class to set up those users. And at the moment when we override it, we basically say, right, don't run that at all. But we still want to do that. So you have to call the base class, same as we pass the options here to the base class. We want to call the on model creating and we want to pass our model builder parameter. Okay, now let's run our uh, migrations again. Okay, great. So migrations work. So let's do .NET EF database update. <clears throat> right. Don't forget to specify the startup project as I just did. Don't be me. Okay. Cool. So let's close that. Let's go into our SQL server and let's explore what we get. My shop tables. So don't actually know what would let us do this. View data. Okay, yeah. So let's close the rest. So straight off the bat, you can see that not all values are present. If we open our order product, you don't see this product and order object here. And that is because Entity Framework is going to do a lot of magic 
to map these two related entities in different tables. So you can see in, let's go into our stock, and you can see that it has this uh, product. So you can have many stocks, and they can all relate to the same product. And you can see that the stock is not contained within the product table. And again, this is Entity Framework doing all the hard work of creating tables and doing the mapping between the tables. Take your time to sort of look around these uh, tables and try to make your own sense of how this works. I will leave a link for the documentation of Entity Framework and, and object relationships and how it works there for any extra information. But this should be, um, shouldn't be too hard to understand. Entity Framework is made to do most of the work for you. So in short, we create our uh, objects, map them the same as before. The only exception is the many-to-many many, many -many relationship where we configure a primary key from the composite key. And don't forget to, uh, to run the original model creating to not lose your identity tables and identity, con not, not tables, but rather the configuration for those tables, right? Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Like, subscribe. It will really help out my channel. And really watching the subscribers grow motivates me. And uh, I feel like making more videos for you guys. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll be happy to answer them. As always, see you in the next video.